Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine. I have started vlogging after brutal Russian invasion of my free and independent country Ukraine. And in my daily videos, I try to update you on the things that we Ukrainians consider important. If you support Ukraine and you want to witness our victory together, please subscribe to my channel. And today I want to be a little bit a teacher because this is one of the jobs that I do. And I want to talk to you about the weakness of Russia and why it is so important. So first of all, let me clarify that weakness of Russia is not my desire or something that, I don't know, is good for my Ukrainian ego, but it is a real fact. For centuries, Russia was creating an image of this super strong country, but this is just an image, whether it was Russian Empire, Soviet Union or Putin's Russia. Why? Because, first of all, can you name me a lot of people who dream to live, work in Russia and they are not alcoholics? No. Why? Because the level of life in Russia is pretty bad. And it is not the modern country that can boast uh, various inventions or things that are created, not dug from their land. Also, they don't value human life, they do not protect human freedom, and uh, like even uh, the beloved Russian culture, it's all about literature of the 19th century and a very depressive one. But be it so. In general, uh, Russia is also weak because it produces dictators and they don't have active civil society and they enjoy the fact that someone is responsible for everything and don't matter who that someone is. So, to some extent, for a very long period of time, Putin was a solution to Russian passiveness and they were totally satisfied with everything he was doing as long as he was in control. But he is not. And this recent chaos that Prigozhin and Putin demonstrated is a signal that dictator is dying. Why is it so important? Because, once again, for Russians it's all about control and the fact that they don't need to decide anything, they are just walking in chains, like, and so on. It seems absurd for us, representatives of the democratic world, because we always want changes, we always want choices, and this is actually something that Russians cannot understand about Ukrainians. This is something that tricked Russians into this war because they believed we will give up and obey. But we're different. It's just like natural for Ukrainians to fight for freedom because freedom is something we need like air. And I think many of your countries and your cultures share this need for freedom. And uh, in the world of authoritarian regimes, any weakness is treated as uh, like a deadly signal. So I'm sure Putin will end soon. But the problem is, once again, Russia is weak and it is not able of uh, creating something. So another criminal will grab the power and tell its population, don't worry, I will decide everything. And they will say, Phew, Finally, we don't need to vote, we don't need to clean our streets, we don't need to write petitions, we don't need all of that, we will remain in the past. Because this is the dream of Russian people. And I'm not being sarcastic or negative. Let's look at that honestly. That's why one of the very important conclusions that all of us have to make I'm sorry, I'm a teacher, I warned you, is uh, that we don't have to be afraid of Russia. In Ukraine, we are not. Uh, we stopped being afraid long ago. And I cannot describe this war in the words of fear, in the words of disgust, yes, in the words of uh, anger, yes, but not in the words of fear. We are not afraid. And I can compare Russia to this like very strong and very stupid boy that was standing in a school corridor and you were afraid of him. And now you are a successful lawyer and he's still standing in a corridor, drunk and angry. Uh, because at a certain period of time, uh, your like physical strength or a number of outdated old Soviet missiles does not decide. And the future is uh, behind those countries that 
are developing, that take care about innovation, that take care about environment, that take care about its people. Uh, because that's the only way to survive, actually. And when we have this angry, drunk bear that is all about, I don't know, digging, eating, robbing, looting, and it thinks that this is strength. No, this is not strength. This is an illusion of strength. But together with this Russian weakness, and we've all seen how Putin looked and how he spoke, and tell me what was it, if not weakness, um, when he addressed the nation during this very brief coup. Uh, was he similar to the one who announced special military operation? No, he was totally different. He was a victim. He was speaking about Russia as a victim. And Russia actually is a victim. And Russia is weak. So f when we think about its future, when we think about um, military operations, when we think about dangers, we have to think not in terms of big, strong Russia, but in terms of weak, very traumatized and very, like, I don't want to say schizophrenic because there are lots of talented and good people among this uh, diagnosis. So, we have this very angry, very brutal, very uneducated country and we don't have to treat it as strong because strength is something different. Strength is ability to develop. Strength is ability to support others. Strength is ability to not be afraid of freedom, be it in a partnership or in the global politics. And it's not the reality of Russia. So understanding that Putin is weak, Prihozhin is weak, Navalny is weak, and average Russian is weak. That's why they don't have society, they have population. And all of their weakness uh, leads us to the conclusion we have to be strong. And there are lots of decisions that we have to make for Russia that we have to make after we win instead of Russia, because Russia is not capable of making decisions. They are capable of giving birth to new dictators who will dictate. And we know that any dictatorship, any authoritarian regime, sooner or later results in outside world. So even if we don't care about Russians, let them rot in their dictatorships, we have to realize that in the next 50 years, in the next 100 years, they will decide, oh, it's time to spread our misery and Ruski mir further. That's why I honestly think Russia needs outer control. That's inevitable because it is weak. And in all of your thoughts, in all of your fears, if you have any, in all of your plans, when you think about the future of Russia, remember, this is a weak country. And Ukraine is strong. And there are many other countries that are strong and they demonstrate it daily. Because we all know it's not about this physical power. It's not about the size. It's about the spirit. And it's about the mind. So let's unite around good things. Thank you so much for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons. Subscribe to my Twitter and Instagram as I share different things on these platforms. Thank you for buying our merch and sending me photos in t-shirts, caps and with cups. That is very heartwarming and very supportive. We are all very grateful that you are with Ukraine in this difficult times, but we must win because we're strong and we're strong together. Slava Ukraini!